and he's also recommending a fourth COVID vaccine shot. Now, I don't know about you guys, but many of us were vaccinated as, as kids against polio. We had our MMR, and I have never seen the CDC coming out saying, oh, you've got to get your second polio shot. You've got to get your third. You've got to get your fourth, and this may continue to keep going. I think the question we all should ask is, when does it stop, and when are va enough vaccines enough? But we don't have that question. That the U.S. has funded the contracts not only to take over the labs, reconstruct them, but also build them. And this goes through grants, through private companies at millions and millions of dollars. Now, what if these bio labs are handling very dangerous pathogens that may lead to the deaths in people in the areas? There are reports of possibly pathog deadly pathogens escaping these biolabs in places like Ukraine, Georgia, Kazakhstan, that is responsible for killing people. What if that's true? I think these are questions that we should ask because no American citizen wants to be held morally and ethically responsible and the U.S. government should not be funding something that is killing people in a country that's not even our own, let alone here at home. These are worthy questions. And so for that reason, because it's become such an issue and because it upsets so many people that I talk to constantly, I have, I have introduced a bill to stop taxpayer funding for bioweapons and eliminate these programs from the federal government because no government should be creating bioweapons. That's evil and wrong. Now, the name of this bill is the Stopping the Spread of Taxpayer-Funded Bioweapon Act. Oh, God, it's just a never-ending stream of stupid. Seriously, like, Google is your friend, and it's free. You don't have to pay anything. And even if you don't want to sound smart, it'll at least help you to not sound like an absolute moron. Here, Marjorie Taylor Greene is standing up on the floor of the house and complaining about the fact that there are COVID boosters. And the comparison she makes to criticize those boosters is the polio vaccine, claiming that the CDC never advised for that vaccine to have a second shot or a third shot or a fourth shot. Only one small problem here, and that is, quite literally, that the CDC recommends four doses of the polio vaccine at two months, at four months, six to 18 months, and four to six years. If there was a way for Marjorie Taylor Greene to be more wrong, I couldn't tell you what it was. And just one more thing on this, because frankly, it's not worth your time, but complaining about taking boosters to give yourself continued protection in the midst of a global pandemic that is mutating in real time is a little self-defeating, isn't it? Like, scientists created a vaccine in record time that will virtually assure your survival from a virus that's killed almost a million people in this country alone. And all you have to do currently is take a booster for continued protection. And that's something to complain about? Imagine thinking that the vaccine is the problem and not the fact that more Americans have died from this pandemic than soldiers who died in World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, Iraq, and Afghanistan combined. But sure, the real issue here is the tyranny of taking a life-saving vaccine. Got it. And then, in case Marjorie Taylor Greene's inability to read the CDC website wasn't already enough misinformation in one speech, she pivoted to a new bit of misinformation by suggesting that the U.S. is funding bioweapons. And if you're wondering where this new theory came from, which has all the makings of every other right-wing rabbit hole conspiracy theory rife with secret deep state government-funded labs creating spooky civilization-ending weapons under the cloak of darkness, you probably won't be surprised to learn that it's Russian propaganda, a blatantly obvious fake flag operation by the Kremlin where they blame Ukraine for a chemical weapons attack, and then when they themselves carry it out, they'll come out and say, see, we warned you about chemical weapons, it was the Ukrainians, which might be just a tad more believable if Russia itself didn't have a long and obvious history of deploying chemical weapons. They did it in Syria in support of the Assad regime, they did it against Alexander Litvinenko, a former Russian intelligence official who defected to the West, who drank polonium-laced tea, and just recently, in 2020, Putin's opposition leader Navalny just so happened to get poisoned with a nerve agent and nearly died. The Kremlin warning about other countries committing chemical attacks is like 
Roy Moore warning about pedophiles. In reality, these aren't so much secret nefarious labs as they are public labs that are a result of an agreement between the US and Ukraine concerning cleaning and converting old Soviet labs. They're part of an agreement between the Department of Defense and the Ministry of Health of Ukraine to prevent the proliferation of technology, pathogens, and expertise that are located in various locations in Ukraine that could be used in the development of biological weapons. In other words, this isn't some secret clandestine effort to create bioweapons. It's a joint and public effort between the US and Ukraine to eliminate them. Marjorie Taylor Greene is standing up there saying, what if these things are true? Yeah, and what if deep sea snakes were swallowing our homes? Just saying something only tangentially related to reality and then doing the whole Tucker Carlson shtick of just asking questions doesn't make those things real. It makes you a conspiracy theorist, one who in this case is doing Russia's bidding by parroting pro-Kremlin talking points. Pro-Kremlin talking points, that is, during Russia's invasion of a sovereign country, during Russia's campaign to bomb children's hospitals and maternity wards. If you find yourself repeating that side's talking points, then I hope you're clear-eyed about what your values are, because they are beyond clear to the rest of us. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.